Hey friends, it's Tara here. Um, if you will comment link below, I will send you the link to um, the project that we are working, well, not the project that we're working on. Um, I'll, if you'll comment link, I'll let you know when the next box opens up. So um, I'm trying to leave a comment really quickly. Uh, say hi. The next 20 spots. All right, so tonight we are doing a very special live. We are doing our DIY home decor box. And if you will just jump on, let StreamYard know that it's okay to give you, um, to give me permission to know who you are. I'm gonna show you really quickly what we're making. All right, so let me go this way. So this is what we're making tonight. It is a little kitchen stand. It's a faux cutting board and it comes on a little stand right here. Hello, Miss Melissa. Hello, Miss Diana. So I want to know, are y'all crafting with me tonight? Or are you just joining in to watch? So if you're one of my box members, hey, Karen, I apologize for the delay. I was having technical difficulties. And friends, let me just tell you what just happened so that y'all can laugh with me, not at me. Well, I mean, you might do that too. Um, so my computer kept saying that it was, the battery wasn't charging or it was almost out of battery. And, it, and so I, I plugged in and I kept going. Well, all of a sudden, I went to click um, the go live button and it just shut off. And I thought, well, that's so weird. Like, what's going on? The little power part had come out of the power box. And so it wasn't actually charging. So then I had to start all over. So I'm so sorry, but this is what we're making. It is a reversible, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. Got Velcro is not my best friend, but it's amazing for reversible stuff. We've got a reversible sign that you can put in your kitchen and you can, um, do, you can switch it up um, year round. So when you get tired of one, you can flip it to the other. Hey, Deborah, are you talking about the tag back, back there? Um, if so, that was our first DIY home decor box. And if you're like, Kara, what's a DIY home decor box? That is the box that we are crafting tonight. Once a month, I send out a box to all of our subscribers. And what we do is we craft together. So we make something for our home that we can craft together. So this month is this reversible sign. And in the past we've done the, um, oh yes, I love this tag too. Um, we've done that bunny that's reversible. It had a Valentine's on the other side. And then we did a super cute watering can last month, which I don't have right next to me. But you get a box in the mail like this and we do the whole project together. So friends, this is what we're making tonight. If you're just hopping on, you're only gonna need what's in your box. I would also maybe have a pair of scissors handy. And I'm trying to remember, was there anything else? I don't think I got an instructions sheet. I think that the girls didn't put one in my box. So I'm gonna have to go without. But this is what we're making tonight. So let me set this off to the side. So if you would like, Dana has the same shirt. Girl, it's a good shirt. It's a really good shirt. Um, so if you would like the link to know we only open 20 spots a month, you'd like the link so that you can get in on next month's box, just comment link. And when we open back up, I will send that to you. Anyone on my email list will also find out um, when we open back up. All right. So this is what came in the box this month. We have a self-serve kitchen sign and a yours was taped okay yours was taped down mine was not because my box didn't get done the way y'all's did and um, since it wasn't being shipped and then you got this whole little container full of goodies all right <laughs> that's okay dana no worries so i'm gonna set now before i move before i just put the box to the side you got a piece of paper now this paper had a sticker like this, and it was like this, and it said, thank you. Friends, keep this paper. What you're gonna do is we're gonna craft right on that paper, and that way you won't make a big mess on whatever table you're crafting on. So I'm gonna pull all this out, and the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, this is very important, do not pull your tape off. 
Mine doesn't have tape because mine was the demo box, but yours came taped. Let me show you what yours looks like. If you pulled your tape off, just grab it and put it back on. This is Tainer's tape, so it's a special tape. And when yours came, it looked like this, all right? And I want to show you the reason that we sent the painter's tape this month. And the girls, I'm not going to lie, my two Kinsleys that were helping me, they did not really love doing this part. But I told them how much y'all were going to appreciate it. And so they did it. So this is what we um, are going to use this for. So we're going to take this off. I'm going to pull this tape. You're just going to pull it from the back. You're going to pull the piece off. All right, and when it's like this, you're gonna tuck this piece down under and tuck this, and you're gonna stick it right to your brown paper. All right, so stick it real good, push it down real good, right to your brown paper. Okay, uh-oh, did somebody throw their tape away? Oh, is that what the sad face is for? Somebody tell me, because I don't like sad and angry faces. They make me not happy. If you threw your tape away, I'm sorry, but this is just a hack, <laughs> okay? okay? This is just a hack to help you when you're painting. That's all it is. It's just to make your life a little bit easier. The other thing is I'm going to take this other piece and I'm going to stick it down to my brown paper. All right. Now, the next thing I want you to do is we're going to work on painting our backgrounds. The first one that we're going to paint, I'm going to start with the white side, and I'm going to tell you why. We're going to paint the white side, and then we're going to paint this. And then while this is drying, we'll flip this over and paint the other side brown. And if you have some charring on one side, that's the side I would paint brown. It, it's just inevitable when you cut with the laser, there's always going to be charring. And so I can't really help that. But that's what, um, that's what you're going to do. You're going to paint this side brown. So this is going to be my white side. And then we will do, um, while our brown side is drying, we'll probably do another coat of white, depending on if you like the way it looks or not. And then we'll do black. All right. So we're just going to jump in and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little paint thingy. And I didn't hear from y'all that any of the paint leaked this month, so I'm really hoping that it didn't. Um, please, please let me know if it did. Um, we try really, really hard to um, to try to get it to not. So we've we've tr we've switched to these containers, and we also shrink wrapped everything this month so that hopefully it would not get messed up. Okay, so I've got a piece of twine. Set it off to the side. I've got part of a pipe cleaner. I'm going to set that off to the side. I've got these pieces, which I'm going to paint black with my self-serve kitchen. I think my mom is on here. I just saw a baby girl pop up. I also gave you two options to paint this month. You have a um, foam brush and you have your makeup sponges. So whatever you prefer is totally fine. This is your piece of Velcro. Now, this is very important. You will need scissors for this because, and I'm going to go ahead and do mine right now. I'm going to cut this bigger piece. See how there's a little piece and a big piece? I pulled them apart. I'm going to cut this piece in half. So now I have three pieces. I have two that are my two, two that are soft and one that's rough. You might have two that are rough and one that is soft. Either way, totally fine. I'm going to set those off to the side. And then you also have glue, which we will use in a little while. Now, all of that was packaged on this foam plate, which was so that you could dab your paint right here on this foam plate. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my white and I'm not going to dump my white out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to dip right into this container so that I can use whatever's left for another project. So with the fat side down on my, um, what do you call it? My makeup sponge. I'm just going to start kind of brushing um, strokes right across. Now, if you have water handy, which I highly recommend, you can actually dip your makeup sponge right in the water. And you can kind of use it while you're putting your paint on. And it creates more of a stain effect. 
Can y'all see the difference? See how it, it's kind of stained on the wood instead of just bright white? So if you want it to have more of that stained effect, that's what you're going to want to do. I'm just kind of brushing it on. You don't want it to really dry when it's there's a big paint glob. You want to kind of keep brushing so you don't have all those strokes. I'm so excited that so many of y'all are on live tonight. I'm hoping that y'all are also crafting. I know for my central people, it's a little bit early for y'all. But y'all know me. Like, I'm a morning person, not a nighttime person. So, for me to go live at 7 p.m., I know that sounds, I'm such an old lady. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I'm like, man, I have to really psych myself up because I don't have any energy left by the time 7 o'clock rolls around. I've already dinnered the kids and done all the things and winding down for the day. Some of y'all probably thrive at night. God made us all different, didn't he? So I did give y'all a glove. You can use your glove if you want to. I'm not using my glove because I'm stubborn. And I'm getting it on my hands. I'm going to get some of this off down there. That dry. So I'm just kind of brushing my paint on. Yeah, this is late for me, Dana. So some people don't understand that. They're like, really? Like, I don't, your business would do so much better if you would go live at night. Well, I hear you. But um, they wouldn't see the real me because I'm a morning person. And by nighttime, I'm like, oh, anybody else? Oh, Laura, I'm so sorry. The good news is it will be available for replay. Will be available for replay. All right, friends, if you want this, I'm just going to keep painting, um, turn this around. If you want this to look more of, like I said, the stained, you can also take a wet paper towel at this point. After you get paint on the whole thing, you can take a wet paper towel and you can wipe it down. All right. That way, some of your paint will stay, some of your paint will go, and it will give you kind of a stained effect. Now, I'm trying to wipe off my edges because I don't want them to be white since this is going to be double-sided. Dana, I'm glad I'm not the only one. And Laura, I don't even know how, like, you're leaving to go to a volleyball game. It To me, it's late. <laughs> Do you, like, take your pillow and your blanket in the stands? All right. So just... Gonna a little bit more on here. I want it to look somewhat the same all over. Oh, Laura, I'm so sorry. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm glad you loved your box, but I'm so sorry about your mom. Condolences to you, babe. I am so sorry. You know it. The things you do for your kids. Yes, Laura, you're right. The things you do for your kids. Um. Oh, Laura. Okay, so Laura Goss just said that she opened her box and she cried that her mom passed away yesterday afternoon, but that she loves the box. Um, girl, I hope that this brings you a little bit of cheer. Um, not that anything uh, can really cheer you up right now, I'm sure. But um, just know that we are all praying for you. And we love you. Oh, and you forgot you ordered the Mother's Day things. Oh, oh love, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Friends, I'm, I just switched over to this. So y'all can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just dabbing the paint onto our farm animals. And you don't have to do the same colors in the same places that I did. I just wanted to show you the box as I, um, I did it. <sighs> okay, man, my heart's heavy now. I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. All right. While that is drying, this part is still drying a little bit. So I'm going to switch over. 
actually, y'all give me a second. I'm going to grab a paper towel. I forgot I had these right here too. So you can use a paper towel or you can, um, or you can use like one of these microfiber wipes, baby wipe, whatever you want to use. I need to get a little bit of this paint off my hands. But I wanted to show y'all, I might have waited too long. We'll see. I was going to show you, um, actually, yeah. All right. What um, this will look like if you wipe some of it off, if you want it to just be that white stained look. So I'm going to wipe some of this off. You're like, you just put all that paint on there. I know. I know. But look how pretty. It's hard. It's really hard to see. But um, look how pretty that stained effect looks. So my paint was just a tiny bit dry. You don't even have to wait for it to dry to do this. But if you're going to wait, I mean, if you're going to wait for it to dry, you do want to use something that's pretty wet and it will hold up. So like this um, Clorox wipe or baby wipe is a good alternative. Now, if you want yours to be more bright white, then just put another coat of paint on it. Oh, that's looking pretty. And this looks a little bit whiter around the edge. And I'll show y'all on the first one I did, I didn't, it's not quite as, like I didn't take off quite as much white paint. So let me show you the other one after I wipe this down a little bit more. Okay. Be real careful because where your hands are, where you're holding on to it, you'll kind of pull that paint off. But it has a really pretty um, stained effect, which the camera is not it's playing tricks on me. Let me show you all the other one. See, the other one I didn't do, I did a little bit more white. I didn't wipe so much of it off. This new one, you can see a lot of the wood grain through it. You're seeing a lot of glare, but you can see a lot of wood grain through it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and do another coat right here on, oh, I just did that in the wrong paint. Okay, friends, let me show y'all a quick trick since I just did this. If you want to reuse a makeup sponge that is wet, already has paint on it, all you have to do is cut the tip of it off. So you're just going to cut just like this. And then you have, which these scissors aren't great, but then you have a dry area with no paint on it that you can start painting with. Okay, hopefully that was helpful for someone. And all right, so I'm just going to go back into my white paint and I'm going to just dab a second coat on my farm animals, trying to keep it from just completely um, getting all yucky on the sides. Try to keep it just on the top. Oh, that's way too much. And you can always hit this with a blow dryer if you want to speed the process up. I'm going to move on to the black and give this a little bit of time to dry. And then if it's not dry, I'll come back and hit it with a blow dryer. Okay, and like I said, you can also use your foam brush. So I'm going to show you with the brown when it's time for that. I'm going to show you with the foam brush. But right now, I'm going to grab my other makeup sponge, and I'm going to get my black paint, and we're going to paint our self-serve kitchen and these pieces. Put it right here. All right. Now these should not take very much paint and really the um, the black, the sides, because they're so dark, you may not even have to paint them. 
but I'm just going to dab this on. You'll see how quick that covers. So this is just going to need one quick coat. I think I already told y'all that I gave you a makeup sponge, not a makeup sponge, a, um, a glove that you can wear with on your painting hand or on the hand that's holding. If you'd rather, it doesn't matter. Um, but I just tend to get myself dirty and then come back and scrub it off. So all we're doing is we're just gently putting our paint on. Okay, so this one is done on both sides. So I'm going to set it right up here to dry. I'm going to do this one. Can't wait to see y'all's boxes when you're done. I know that um, several of y'all were looking forward to this live because you kind of got stuck on the steps when it got to the greenery, which is, is so hard to explain. I was having trouble, but I knew that several of y'all, when I didn't ship the instructions last month, you wanted them. So I wanted to give y'all instructions. <sighs> um, so I wanted to make sure I did that, but then I was struggling with how to tell you on paper how to make a bow and all the greenery. Laura, I am so stinking glad that you have that on your calendar. It's on my calendar too, obviously, um, but I am so excited. I was so excited to see that you were coming and I'm guessing you're bringing a guest. Okay, Melissa just said she likes the way I say dry. All right. Friend, I'm from the South. I might live in Ohio, but I'm from the South. And I took uh, my son and one of his little friends, I think it was at the end of the school year last year, to the movies. And he said, the, his little, my son's little friend said to me at one point, he goes, Pa, Pa. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, Miss Carrie, you say those words so funny. And I thought, oh, you're bringing your daughter. Laura, that's so exciting. Thank you for bringing her. I'm so glad. Um, but it was it was hilarious because he, he was making fun of me. But it was just funny because he's like, five and pie. So when you said draw, I was like, ah. Oh. Darn it. I can't get away from it, but. <laughs> All right. So this is, I'm just brushing this paint on and then we're going to let this dry and then I'll switch over to the brown. I think we're almost done painting already. We're only what, well, I guess we're almost 30 minutes in. I guess we should be done painting. I feel like this one shouldn't take. <laughs> That. You live in South Carolina, so there's a couple variations. Yes, there are definitely variations. And I grew up in Texas, and I lived in Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee before I moved here. So, yes, there are definitely variations. I probably have a northern variation now. All right, I'm just dabbing this on. You can do the up and down motion or you can brush it on like with like a paintbrush, however you want to do this. I'm so excited. We um we opened the box up for new members tomorrow. Oh, Nikki, I'm so sorry. They sh it should have been there by now. Wondering if it got stuck. Um shoot me a message if you don't get it tomorrow and I will send you the tracking information. Because, yeah, those all shipped, gosh, the 24th. So you should have had it by now. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to switch over to my brown. Now, 
here is the pro tip of the day. If you don't like the brown you got, and I wanted to be able to make it so that you could do a light brown, dark brown, whatever you wanted to do. So I gave you white, and then I gave you a middle of the road brown, just kind of a chocolatey color. But I want mine to have a little bit more of a black tint to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, let me move all this off for just a second. Move all these off. I'm gonna use my tray. I'm gonna pour some brown paint on. And then I'm gonna put a drop of black. Now I don't want much, I just want a tiny bit. If you get too much, move it away. Like I don't want much at all. That might even be too much. But I'm gonna take my foam brush. I went into the water and now I'm just gonna mix this and see if I got it dark enough. Nope, I actually didn't get it dark enough. So let me go a little bit darker. And I think I'm gonna mix a little bit more brown too. because I think I'm gonna need more than that. So Just kind of play around with it until you get it the color you want. Now remember, it's always gonna dry just a tad bit darker. So you might wanna go not quite, you know, as dark as you want it. That's a pretty chocolatey color, but I think I wanna go darker add more brown friends do this a little bit at a time because you don't want to end up using all of your paint and then it being too dark or too light and if you do get it too dark you can add a little bit of white so just kind of play around with it nope I'm still gonna go darker See that? Okay, I like that better. So now let me kind of mix it all up. It's okay if it's not a hundred percent mixed, because you can it'll have that like wood effect on your board if that's the case. Okay, I'm gonna all right, I've got a lot of paint on here, but I'm gonna dip straight into my water. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm just kind of watering this down. All right, now I'm gonna grab my board. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start brushing this on, wetting my brush and, and kind of, um, I don't know, just kind of working that paint in so that it looks more like a stain. All right, so just back and forth. I don't want it to get too covered because I do want it to still look stained. And I still see some wood grain. I'm going to keep dipping in my water and kind of spreading my paint. Getting some, some paint boogies on here. You can see I'm kind of working it into that wood grain. I don't want it to dry too fast. Can y'all see that? See how pretty that is? But I am just kind of working it down in that wood grain. Don't want any real streaks in it. Pushing it to those sides. A little bit more paint. I'm going to set this somewhere so I can grip it. Okay, now before I do the top part, I don't want this to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, you can use a paper towel. I'm going to use um, this wet wipe. And I'm going to wipe my edges. Real good. I'm gonna wipe my edges. And then I'm going to wipe my board. Don't you just see how now it just looks like a dark brown stain. Now I got it a little bit too much in the middle. I'll go back and I'll add a little bit more paint. So let me get some more. 
let it grab that board. Next time I'll let that dry just a little bit more. Now if you get a pronounced, like I had a pronounced black streak for just a second because it was on the side of my brush, just work it in. Dana, I like the brown too. I think it turned out really pretty and I like the contrast. And you can, you can do it almost black if you want. Okay, now I'm gonna let that dry for a second and I'm gonna work on the top. Flip it around, hoping I'm not getting paint on the other side. You can probably set yours down. I just can't really do that very well because um, I've got to keep everything where y'all can still see it. Okay. Now, once you get this the way you want it, which I'm pretty happy with the way that looks, um, I don't think I'm going to wipe it again. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty pleased. I do want to make sure I get all my any brush strokes or anything out of it. But I think it looks pretty stinking good right now. If you see, um, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but there's some spots like here. That's just the wood. So that's just part of having the wood. All right. I'm going to set this off to the side for a second. I'm going to throw this in my water. And I'm going to wipe my hands. So that I don't get any of that all over my project. Now, I would say that once everything is dry, what I would do, and I'm going to do that in just a second. I might have to blow dry. So let me see if I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to kind of clean up my area so that I don't get any paint or anything on my ribbon and my floral elements. Let me put all of my little paint tops back on. Y'all have to let me know your feedback on the packaging for this month. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you like the stuff I did last, like the packaging last month better. We're trying to ship 100% no spills, but I know that's kind of impossible too. Okay. So these pieces are done, and the way that you put them together is just you slide one right down into the slit of the other. So, so these two slits, just work them down like that, and then you have your little stand. So I'm going to set that off to the side. My self-serve kitchen is good and dry. Good, Laura. I'm so glad. Okay. I do have a couple spots where it's set on the tape. Be very careful when you're pulling this off of the tape, okay? It's still tape, it can still, and this wood is fragile, it can still make it rip. So just be very careful when you're pulling this off. But now we have our words, self serve kitchen. I'm gonna throw that tape away. And then this piece, same thing. Now, I do have some paint right there, but most of it stayed on the tape. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this. Oh, sorry. I'm going to set this like this. I'm going to flip it over or fold it over, I should say. And this is the piece that you were given. Okay, this is the size piece that you were given. And I just have brown paper under here, too. So I had a little bit more room to work. But we want to work on our white side first. I'm still going to let that brown dry. But if a little bit, since we did it, we watered our paint down, if a little bit gets on that paper, it's okay. So the next thing that we're going to work with is our glue. You're going to get your glue and your self-serve kitchen. And what I want you to do at this point is I want you to find the middle, and then I want you to shift down. So for Here's your glue, um, and all you have to do is open it. Um, we'll twist it, twist the packaging all the way tight, and that breaks the seal on the inside. 
And then you're going to take this and don't set it down if it's wet at all. But if it's not wet, you can go ahead and set it down. But we want to find the middle and then we want to go down because that way our greenery is not going to cover up our words. Now, I don't want to go all the way to the bottom, but I want to go pretty close. So I'm about an inch from the bottom. So that's going to be my placement. So let's put our glue on. You don't need glue on all of it. What I would say is, whoops, you want to hit all the areas around the outsides. So especially like right up here. Can I just drop um, super glue in my lap. Is that not? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I told y'all wrong. This one you have to puncture like this. So use the other, the end, the top. Okay, so now the other kind I had, you just squeezed it or tightened it. All right, so we're just going to put glue. And this glue is a little bit thicker than um, some of the other glue, which is why I like it. So you can kind of spread it. I think somebody just showed up to get their box off the porch. Kind of scared me because I'm over here by myself. All right. So I'm just going to put glue in a bunch of different places. Kind of spread it. Okay. I think that's good. Now we're going to flip this over. Move this. All right. So in the center and down, and we're going to drop it. I'm just going to let that sit for just a minute. Okay, just press it down. Make sure you get a good seal and then let it sit for a second. Okay, now I'll let that dry. And while that's drying, I think we'll go ahead and start making our bow. That way then when we flip it over, we'll be ready. So you got which I know I got, I don't know where it went. Um, you got a piece of ribbon, there it is. And you got a piece of eucalyptus. Now yours was in one piece. So let me get a piece that's like that so I can show you. We realized after we cut this that we didn't need to. Okay, sorry about that. I forgot that we had cut the piece that was in my box. So you got a piece of eucalyptus that looks like this. And what I want you to do is I literally want you to bend back the bottom two sprigs. Okay, so if you didn't see the way I did that, right above where these last two sprigs are, you're just going to bend back. So now you have three sprigs on one side and two sprigs on the other side. Now, for some of you that everything has to be symmetrical, y'all might be freaking out on me right now. Don't freak out on me. It's supposed to look, look a little bit whimsical and fun. So that's what you're going to do to get this piece in the middle is where you're going to tie your ribbon on with your pipe cleaner. Okay, so let me show you your ribbon. You're going to make an awareness type bow or um, like this. I think you all know what I mean when I say awareness. Um, you can make your tails as big or as little as you want. You can make it you can make it more flat. You can make it more angled. You can see this makes just a little simple bow. OK, this is what this is going to look like. Play around with that. I want mine angled out a little bit more, my tails. So I angled those out, which makes this part a little bit fatter. And you're going to bring this piece right here. Okay, this is, let me show you. You see how you've got the fronts that make the X, and then you can see the back side. That back side piece is going to meet up with the back side of this X, just like that. Then you're going to flip your bow over. Now this is the front. And all you're going to do is you're just going to kind of squish it with your fingers into just a simple little bow. OK, 
Okay, it's hard to turn my fingers this way so I can show you, but that's what it's going to look like. Now you're going to take this simple little squished bow. You're going to put it right there on the middle of your greenery, right there where those pieces were brought together. You're going to take your piece of your pipe cleaner, and then you're going to twist it around the back. Uh-oh, is that good or bad? You're going to twist it around the back. And then you're just going to twist, twist, twist. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that you flatten out when you're done. You flatten out that pipe cleaner like this on the back side. So this is what we have so far. It's not done yet. Okay. So we have our, which, sorry, I keep going the wrong way. We have our two bow piece, two bow, the top part. We have our two tails. We have three sprigs on one side and two sprigs on the other. Okay, I'll see that like that. Now, this would be fine just like it is, but I wanna take it a step farther and I wanna cover up that um, pipe cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little piece of twine. I'm gonna keep a tail. No, it's not gonna be the death of you, Melissa. Come on, you can do this. Just keep, just watch my video again. We're just gonna wrap this around with a, remember I kept a little tail out. Y'all see that? I kept a little tail of twine. We're gonna just wrap, wrap, wrap. And then when we have an, a piece left about the same size as that tail, which is about an inch and a half, we're gonna tie it and just double knot it or tight knot in the back. Now we are, all secure okay and then we're gonna cut now we're gonna cut after you make sure those are good and tight cut the remainder of that little twine tail so this is what it's gonna look like you will be able to fluff your bow if you store this in the future if you store this in the future, um, all you'll you'll do, you can store it flat and then fluff your bow. This is wired ribbon, so it's really easy to bring back to life. Okay, Melissa, it's kind of like um, an accordion fold is how you're going to kind of scrunch it. So you're going to just kind of back and forth, back and forth with your ribbon. And it might take practice. So that's okay. Just smooth it back out and try it again. Okay, it's going to be in the middle, so you're not really going to see it. It's not going to matter. Y'all keep working on your bow. Y'all keep working on this part, and I'll come back to that in just a second. I'm going to flip this over. I think Melissa might be cussing me right now. <laughs> I don't want that. That makes me sad. Um, okay. I'm going to get any excess paint off of my little farm animals. A little bit that was on the back. Same thing here, friends. I like the bow too. I'm glad you like it. It's really simple. After you get the scrunchy part. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> oh, am I not doing a good job teaching? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, I'm sorry, babe. I'm trying. I never said teaching was my specialty. I never said that. But I do love helping y'all craft. <laughs> so. Okay, so what I'm going to do, same thing. You're going to find your middle and then shift down a little bit. So I'm going to be about an inch from the bottom right here, too. I'm going to put my glue on. Same thing. I want to get it on these tips of, like, the animal feet down here, right along this edge. I'm going to do a little bit in the middle. But I'm really concentrating on those areas that might lift. I'm sorry. I, I can do a special tutorial afterwards on the scrunch if you want me to. I don't have to leave right at 8 o'clock or anything. So let's set this down. Put this stuff on here. Set this down. Center it up. I'm going to set it there. I'm going to push down. <laughs> and I'm going to let that sit for a second. 
All right. While that is sitting, oh, friends, look how stinking cute that is. Like, even without the greenery and stuff, like, how cute is that? So we have on one side, we have our self-serve kitchen. And then on the other side, we have our super cute little farm animals. Okay. So now we're going to go back to this. I'm going to go back to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use those Velcro pieces, which, oh, there. Now, this is very important. You're going to put the one that's different. So if you have two soft and one rough, the, the rough one would go on the back of your bow. If you have two rough and one soft, the soft would go on the back of your bow. So whichever piece that you cut in half is not going to go on the back of your bow. It's the one that you only have the one of. So I'm going to get this and pull my backing off. I'm trying to get better about throwing my trash in the trash can as soon as it happens instead of like coming back an hour later and being like, oh, I have this big mess. Anybody else? Okay. So I'm going to just squeeze, like press this down really hard. Just get it to stick. And then we're going to leave it alone for a minute. <laughs> Melissa. Okay, so Melissa got hers to cooperate. Praise Jesus right now because I was feeling really bad. Feeling really bad. And I was considering not being a craft teacher anymore. All right, so next I'm going to take one of these pieces that I have two of now. So for me, it's the soft piece. And I'm going to put it right under my little um, handle part. So it'll be like kind of right at the base of that handle. I'm going to flip it over and I'm do the other side too. Stick that on there. Okay. So now we have our piece here and we have our piece here. And now friends, I will tell you that the first little while you're going to want to not pull this Velcro sticky off of your bow. So whatever side you're going to use it on first, that's where you're going to want to stick it because you're going to want to give that time to adhere really well before you move it to the other side. So I'm going to show you. This is what it looks like here. Just I'm going to gently show you. And then this is what it will look like right here. I'm going to put mine on that side because, well, I'm all about a self-serve kitchen. Not a big cook. But guys, when I was making this box, I thought I wanted to kind of appeal to those of you who aren't self-serve kitchen kind of gals. You like to cook for your families. Um, I'm not really that mom. So here is that side finished. And I'm going to go ahead and put this other side up. I have it on the other one. So we'll put this side up too. And I'm going to real quick, give me just a second. I'm going to flip this. Uh-oh. Okay. There we go. All right. So now you can see we have our self-serve kitchen and our farmhouse kitchen. I'm going to tilt that down. Y'all can see those. And friends, we did that project in under an hour, double-sided. You can flip it around. You can reverse your bow. You could even make a different bow for the other side if you wanted to. But I love how easy it is to just decide you want to swap it, flip your bow and your greenery, and then just use the other side. And you can see I added a lot more black when we did this one versus this one is more chocolatey brown. So you can make it however you want. What I love is to be able to customize these projects to your liking. So I'm um, kind of like with the flowers, you know, you can mix your colors. You could have made different colors last month. Um, I really, really wanted you to be able to do that um, kind of with this too and make your own version of brown. Um, and you could even have done, you could even have swapped it and done the brown on the back of this one and done white words. All right. Melissa says no more bows. I don't know. I can't promise that. I can't promise that, Melissa. But what I will promise 
is that I will work with you one on one if you need help with your bows. Um, if anyone would like the link to the next box, when we open, we open 20 spots a month is all that we open because it's just me and a couple Kinsleys over here that put all the boxes together and we get everything cut and ready. Um, but we, um, and we've already got next month cut, um, but we've got 20 spots that are opening up starting tomorrow. If you would like that link, um, just comment um, the word link and I will send it to you when we open and we would love to have you. And so next month, I will give you all a surprise. Well, not really a sneak peek because um, I meant to take the pictures today and then I had to take my kids to the dentist. And anyway, today did not go as planned. Um, but there is a floral element to next month. Next month, think um, summer fields. Let's say that summer fields. So that is the sneak peek um, hint for next month. And hopefully tomorrow I'll have sneak peek pictures up. But I'm so excited. Thank you all so much for joining me. I would love it if you would sprinkle this with your friends um, and invite them to join our DIY home decor box. <laughs> Laura, Laura, do you mean the um, this box or next month's box the, that you're going to give your granddaughter? I think she'd probably love both of them. But. We'd love to have y'all. Seriously, friends, we all need this hour in our life. Um, no, it's not sunflowers. I thought about sunflowers, but it's not sunflowers. But I, um, we all need this hour in our life where we can laugh and we can, you know, fight about ribbon. And Melissa, I'm looking at you. Love you, friend. Um, <laughs> and we can get paint all over our hands and get crafty and messy and just have fun together. Um, I do have, okay, there is a daisy element. There is, I believe, a daisy element. Um, I am 95% sure there's a daisy element, Dana. Thank you for sprinkling. I appreciate that so much. Uh, but what I was going to tell you is we have a $10 workshop coming up for members. If you're a DIY home decor box member, which you got a box, or your virtual paint party member, and you um, paint a door hanger with me every month, Do you do not need to buy the workshop, okay? You do not need to buy the workshop. It is free for members. But if you're not a member and you just want to kind of dabble and try a project, it's a great place to start. And do y'all want to see a sneak peek? Because it's coming up in the next week. We will be advertising for it. We'll be selling the workshop. And it will be put in... Um, Oh, I was going to say, it will be put in the vault so that you guys will have access to it. For members, y'all will get it around the 15th. Um, and then for non-members, y'all can purchase it, start as soon as we um, kind of open up. So if you're on our email list, you will let, we will let you know. But yes, let me grab it and I'll show you. Now, what's super awesome about this project is we um, everything that you need to do it comes from the Walmart craft aisle. So let me, without further ado, let me move this stuff out of the way. Oh, I glued my paper down. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to leave that. <gasps> Look. So this is our next project. Let me back this. See if I can back this up and show you. It's a rustic. It's hard to see, but it actually has some, um, like it's vintage on the sides. So we did a lot of vintage on our stars and we, we made it look very rustic. But this is going to be um, our next project. So I'm super excited. I hope that y'all will join me for that. And like I said, that'll be a $10 workshop. You can get everything you need in the craft aisle at Walmart. I think the total supplies, if you already have your paint brushes, um, the total supplies were like, gosh, Karen, tell me. It was under $10. Under $10. And what I love about it is just how, I mean, it'll go all the way through July 4th. So you can leave it up all the way through July 4th. So this will be a fun Really easy. Oh, and the best part, it took me 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Under $10 in the Walmart craft aisle. 
and 20 minutes and I'm going to keep it up until July. So I love y'all. I hope y'all have a fabulous. Yeah, Karen, I think it actually, if you already have paintbrushes, maybe $8 or less. If you already have the paint, you don't even need $8. It would have been like maybe six ish. So I am so glad y'all joined me tonight. Again, please sprinkle with your friends. We would love to have um, your friends join us for the next next craft workshop. I hope y'all have a fabulous, fabulous day and I'll see y'all later. Bye friends.